so excited to be here today. Oh my god. We can talk about the news now. Last week I was like just jumping in my seat there holding on to this, all this news and I am so excited. Oh my god. You want to see it? You want to see it? This is what we're going to be doing. My little chickadee. I turned it into a holiday festive sort of. Still great for, you know, any season if you like to uh, add some pine needles and some berries and uh, yeah this is my little chickadee and uh, I'm so honored that when Donna seen my bird she goes you gotta do that chickadee and just add some Christmas flair to it and it's gonna be perfect for our event and it's just like I'm so excited what do you think guys mm -hmm. how many's joining us uh, yeah, I'm going to break it down for you guys, okay? Um, Belle was asking about um, if she's a newbie can be able to do it. Um, with the one-stroke technique, I'm telling you, there's so many tricks, and it, everything looks harder than it is. It's really deceiving sometimes. And it's just learning how to double-load your brush and putting some pressure down on it and then flicking it out. So with my particular chickadee project, there's a lot of uh, chisel work, right? So it's going to be very repetitive and very easy, and I've got the pattern there for you two to start you off and uh, i'll show you how to do the pattern and and um get it all laid out and uh i originally did my first one in the pure paints that are like an oil paint heavy body um and then when don asked me about this i'm like yeah sure i'm game so i recreated this all with the multi-surface paint and um so yeah thicket uh thicket or um, bright green is what i used a lot in here so i did use some of the newer colors um to give you guys some heads up if you want i want to talk about reds today too for you uh, a little bit just because we're getting into the poinsettia season and um to the you know tomorrow is uh our remembrance day and if you're wanting to tackle a poppy i figured i would come on today and show you a few things that uh, might help you do that um, especially when we're shading with red. So red is definitely one of our hardest colors to shade with. So um, I've got a few little uh, tricks up my sleeve that I'd like to share with you today. So yes, definitely if you guys have any questions, please pop them down in the chat below. Uh, thank you. You love my poppies. You want to see uh, some I was playing around and of course some of them are more advanced, right? So um, actually with, with playing around, I'm going to, I'm in the midst of creating actually a practice course just on the poppy. And if you guys know me at all, um, by the way, I didn't introduce myself to you guys that are new to my group. My name is Mandy Sision. My original name, like my given name is Amanda, but with Amanda Dewberry, it was funny how many times I get tagged with her stuff. They you think you're talking to Amanda Dewberry and I get tagged. And then I have some other friends that are named Amanda and I'm like, I've been named Amanda all my life. My mother's always called me Mandy. All my friends call me Mandy. So Facebook allowed me to change it to Mandy. So Mandy is my name. Cision, well, that's my last name. Uh, it's my married name. Just to give you guys a little insight on my last name because it was so funny. Donna having a hard time with my last name. And uh, I married a man named Darren, uh, my father, the son of my father, the my son's father. <laughs> First marriage. <laughs> His name was Darren, and I used to joke with him, Decision. His last name was Cision. And I'm like, the man couldn't make a, a decision. It was so funny. So anyways, that's my little joke on how to say my name last, uh, my last name properly. And um, and then through the years, you know, I've been, people are like, you're such a perfectionist. You know, Precision Cision, I got the nickname. And then it was like, Precision Cision couldn't make a decision. <laughs> Because I can paint on anything. I just can't decide some days on what I'm going to paint on, what I'm going to paint. There's so many ideas and things that we can create. It's just endless. So sometimes, yes, I have a hard time making a decision. And even on, you know, Tip Tuesdays, you know, sometimes we change our mind. And I guess that's artists' uh, rights. We're allowed to do that. <laughs> so I hope that you guys are uh, enjoying, you know, my new live I'm pushing myself to get out of my comfort zone, and I hope you guys are going to push yourself out of your comfort zone. We are dissecting them. Um, like I said, if you know me by now, when I see something, I want to dissect it. How do I do that? Why does it work like that? You know, what is it that I'm, I am I got to get before I understand the process? 
So that's what I like to do with all my courses as I dissect things. I break it down very simple. We start off with very, very simple steps. And then I slowly bump you to that advanced level. And with going back and repeating and practicing and then moving on as you feel comfortable through the process, this is how I develop all my courses. Alrighty, so I'm going to just show you down here. On, uh, I took a quick picture before the live today. And... Um, I was playing around with some ideas for our course for my practice sheets for you guys to print out and definitely these are some advanced strokes here playing around uh, layering them and you can see just by some of my examples I was using some different colors to play around with my reds and for the traditional thing uh, remembrance day poppy we tend to go with the reds and i have some beautiful poppies in my garden and they're really light and white and lots of pinks and purples and you know pur uh, poppies can really uh, be any color you know you can fool around with poppies any time of the year and i do plan to play around with that in my course as well is put some different color poppies um, and different ways of doing it. And if you guys checked out my dream catcher, I did kind of give you a little heads up on how to also do flipped petals as well. So the, there's that option as well, or doing backflips with your strokes as well to create, you know, more really roughly kind of, um, so I've got a couple of different variations here in different sizes and, you know, uh, tearing them, you know, twice or three times, you know, playing around, you know, cause we can, you know, so, I just, you know, thinking, you know, this might be a good topic to, to come along and share with you guys to how to create the shading because, like I said, people usually use black with the red and sometimes black can overtake your red and make it almost too dark. And then you want that center with the black to pop out. So we're looking for a little bit more softer shade of black in the background to have that gradient go on with their red. And then, of course, if we add white with our red, we end up with pink. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about, you know, why I use yellow as a, a highlight color. And, you know, that comfort zone of where, you know, you'll see some of them are a little brighter red than others. Okay, some are too, almost too yellow. Okay, so, you know, you got to find that balance of adding just a tiny little bit of yellow just to brighten up things i love com uh, combining colors and making new colors and uh blending when i don't have the the, the colors that are um available to us right so um yeah so just uh checking out the comments here hi from florida hi rita hi kyle hi thanks for popping in we have mary jane and uh who else do we have here today thank you so much for coming and checking it out and um <laughs> paint a quick poppy with me today Alrighty. so what i want to share with you is uh we have our traditional red that has always been around is our engine red and it's a wonderful red okay but for poppy sometimes i like to use a little brighter red so i'll use a uh apple red here let's show you down here okay and then there's a new one out that's really nice too is a cardinal red and that's actually what i popped in my holiday cardinal and the berries is the cardinal red so you guys need any colors i'm giving you some little bit of heads up here and then we have our berry wine okay so when you mix berry wine and engine red together you don't get a lot of extremes right so it's forcing you to add a little bit of yellow in there or a little bit of white in there to get a little bit brighter so that you can see that darker color okay so i have another little trick that i want to show you guys that i do with my red so Get some paint out there right guys so we'll add a little bit of apple red and i'm going to show you with the berry wine there was a little hard spot that came out with that one and i'm also going to pop out a little bit of moon yellow okay so sometimes i like that darker rich uh, yellow if you only have daffodil then i would add just a titch of uh 
a little bit of your engine red into it and that'll help to warm it up but just a little titch and then with it you can use the lime green or the citrus green okay just a little tiny bit of that and then i'm going to play around with some thicket and i like thicket because it's not as dark as sap okay for this trick if you like sap or how only have sap sap will work definitely for you as well but i don't want to darken it too much and i don't want it to 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 go too muddy right so i do like to have uh just a little bit of depth in there okay so I'm, i went and painted on shiny paper i bought a pack by accident it's kind of cool in a way want to do some really pretty cards I got this one actually at Walmart, I believe, this pack of paper. And um, definitely could make some really pretty cards with it. Says the season is coming up, guys. Uh, so you excited to see what I'm going to do with these reds? Melinda signed up. Awesome, awesome. Yes, let me know who's all signed up. Um, Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun is it smooth to paint on the cardstock the shiny stuff yeah actually it is it doesn't seem to be as dry as our other cardstock it's got a tiny little bit of slip to it um yeah so next wednesday i'm going to change it to my live will be here next wednesday guys already play with that and um yeah, let's get these shiny ones off here so that you guys can see a little bit better on the matte paper. Alrighty. And just to warm up, I'm just going to use my big three-quarter. Just so you guys can see really good. Alrighty. So first, I just dampened my brush very slightly. And I want to make sure that I have all the water out of it okay so if you need a little bit more slip we'll add a little bit of a floaty medium here on the side okay because working on cardstock a lot of times you will get that little bit of resistance as opposed to playing on wax paper or the plastic sheets try to get a little closer here and hopefully i won't have my head in the video Try to change my camera a little bit closer here. All right, so normally we would go to a berry wine in our red. And we can get a little bit of depth. Okay. But the inner side, inner side of the petal of a poppy is definitely uh, a little bit more darker than the berry wine. Okay. This would be pretty for your poinsettias for sure and you'll see that uh the apple red is definitely uh more translucent color and sometimes you do have to do two strokes uh let it dry and repeat that stroke just to get a little bit more coverage okay so we have i'm just going to do a couple of just warm-up gradients here for you guys show you some different colors okay so i'm just going to help it along a little bit and press that in there okay so there's not a lot a lot of depth in there right when we're usually playing with a lot of white okay so what i like to do is in this mix uh just that tiniest about of thicket in with the berry wine okay and then i'll show you again that it comes out a lot darker just a little bit more paint or berry wine and you can play with this blend okay to get a nice dark color and have that nice bright richness of the apple red okay you see the depth in there now and it still has that little bit of berry wine darkness to it okay. so that's how i make my richness of the darkness there okay so 
when you do shell strokes to create your poppies, when you buy them, they're usually uh, done very simply, you know, little plastic ones you put on your sleeve or your chest. Um, a lot of times you'll see them, they're definitely uh, four petals in a lot of them. And you're, you know, your simple kind of one, right? So you're giving yourself that illusion of okay so i'm just playing here guys okay just just to break it down in science for you okay so you've got your your four and this is what helps to to you know give it that poppy look your traditional remembrance day poppy right and if you just want to lay down placement I'm just going to scoop up some of this good red here, right? And then go inside it and do some smooth strokes, just simple U strokes. Okay. Just to give you a, a very simple, simple. And I would just take flip flop the corner of my brush and just color that right in there. Okay, and that gives you like a very very simple simple one okay but of course us that have been playing around with our shell strokes okay so in my in my intro program that i've been talking about guys my complete program the shell stroke course number five has got is loaded okay guys there's actually five different shell strokes out there that you can create and there's different reasons why you want to create one or the other to be able to have an a looser uh, petal to a tighter flower petal look you know there's so many different ways and I talk about it all in my program guys okay so when you're doing a um, poppy you know usually you have a bigger set center area okay so you can always just draw out a, a simple little center just to guide you so that you're gonna stay focused and just like a lot of our uh, flowers you know you can put or five if you want okay so again sometimes I like to just do a coat that's not too difficult right just to get it in there so I get the coverage and then a lot of times I'll go back over it and then define it so I just want to get placement and almost back uh, base coating a little tiny bit okay so again, you can do a five, right? And just see how big do you want them? Because you can always change things from this point right here. Okay, so again, we're just base coating and just kind of simply mapping out how big we want them and how round we want them. And of course, there's going to be different ways of doing it too. And that's what I plan to put in my poppy courses, you know, the ones that are directed this way and that way and um definitely you know there's so many different ways of playing around with it okay so now that i know the size now i'm going to add a little bit more flare to it okay i need a little bit more floating medium and then if you want to add more of a bumpy stroke and what we're doing is we're going to leave it a little bit open okay so a lot of our shell strokes are done with a pivot point okay in mind so to be able to get around that circle good you want to have an open shell okay so i'm trying to create my dark color add more make lots of red okay and then go over it so it's just a soft bumpy look okay and i like to make if you're going to do different tiers then you definitely want to you know have the lot the back tier a lot darker than the front ones okay. and then depending on which way it's easier for you you can go this way or that way i find this way oh and hopefully my head wasn't in the way some of them if i'm doing a left-handed stroke sometimes it's 
a little harder so I got to get my shoulder over it so if I'm doing get my shoulder in it then you guys are seeing my head okay so this this one here I'll show you again okay try to keep my head out of the way maybe I'll have to move my camera a little bit more in all right so that gives you a really pretty flower that looks like a poppy and then again I just slip slap any goopiness if it's too thick in there then I'll smooth that out and then I give this a little bit of a base coat so yeah this is how I do it and then I will do a bunch of different ones and different ways of flipping them and um, you'll see on this one I was just getting some ideas you know usually poppies are really crazy curly different stems on them and then they when they die they look just like that so I have a couple just coming out of bloom and then full bloom and then the after they die off so I'm going to have all those different um, poppies in the course for you guys and the leaves how I do them um, different ways different angles and different ways of doing the centers okay so as this is starting to dry you can definitely start to pounce in your center I think I moved my camera here a little bit there so what do you think guys what do you do if you have paint bottle with thick paint inside? I bought a brand new moon yellow and it's very thick. Definitely, um, depending on how thick it is, I do have a couple hacks that I made now. There's two hacks, two ways I uh, play around with uh, thinning out my, my paint, Melinda. Have you seen them yet? Um, definitely floating medium is going to be your trick. And sometimes what I do is uh I'll show you back down here is if i have a really thick one then i will pre-wet it put a little floating medium in it and pre-wet it so then that way when i need it it's at the consistency that i need does that help with that question um yeah so yeah, don't forget to put your questions down here. And uh, I'd love to see your poppies, guys, that you create. So what I also do uh, as well is I add a little bit of black. Just a little tiny pea. And a little bit of white. And if you really want to get into detail... You could always, you know, do like tiny little crisscrosses all around and, but depending on how, what you're painting on, a lot of them are really small. And oh, wait a minute. I have uh, poppies to show you guys right here. On my t-shirt. I don't know if you can see the little details. All right, so Donna's done some little poppies on our t-shirts here and again with the whites and the different colors right so like i said poppies can be uh very simple one layer right and you guys want to see how i lighten them up too right all right so going to dry out my brush here again because I stuck it in the water by accident and reload this area here put in some berry wine again wake it up a little bit again now I'm going to add just a titch of yellow okay. so you'll see over here is a little brighter almost orangey red very warm red very warm orange I should say okay so inch it just a little bit at a time okay so maybe I want it a little bit brighter just a very smidgen 
Okay, so this is going to be the trick to uh, really focus on the amount of red and yellow that you need. Okay, and squish this all together. Blend it really good so that I get that nice, smooth, light color. So it gives you lots of paint to play with here. And it's that right color that you're looking for. Okay, and then if you still want to add a little tiny bit of highlight, I'm right at the top of my page there, then definitely you're going to add just that little tiny bit of a tip and then go over it again. Okay. All right, so we can do our simple look here and you can test it see does it stand out no need a little bit more yellow don't blend it in so much to your big pile let's try again you know so you want to be able to see it right but you still want it to be able to look red okay and then i brick layer my petals a little smaller I layer them a little bit Again, I'm trying to stay a little simple for you guys here. If you want to have more advanced, then you're going to have to jump on my course when I have it finished. And um, add another skirt in there. Okay, if you feel like it's too yellow, then definitely go over it again and darken it a little bit. Okay, it's just very simple, bumpy shell strokes. Hopefully you guys can see. <laughs> I'm gonna move over a little bit more. Gives it a vintage look. Yeah. A little bit more fancy. Okay. And then of course if you want to do the back flip, then you need a little bit more yellow just on the tips. Okay. When you're doing your strokes, okay. paper is warping, okay. and it's just about playing with your brush. Alrighty. Wet. It's hard to see, right? See if I can hold the paper here a little bit differently. Um, I do a couple of bumpies and then back rock and around and around. You can just do one in the middle if you want. And if you lose some of your color at the end, I can you can always add a little bit to that last part of your stroke and then flip that around. See a little bit better there, guys. All right. Practice in both directions. And you can make it really curly. Okay. A bit of floating medium. get it a little bit brighter so you guys can see it okay so this is definitely too, a little bit too yellow but maybe you guys can see a little better right the little curlies that i'm making okay let's tone that down a little bit okay always go over it again guys you never have to worry about that Okay. But I do like that more of a darker, orangier look. Okay, so it just looks like a highlighted red. And it'll show a lot better. Okay. I play around. Just make them really loose and curly looking. Okay. And you can do, you know, again, your back. Uh, a little bit more plain, or you can curl both layers, make them really, really fliff, really curly. 
Alrighty. So what I like to do first is uh, get a little bit of bright green in there. Okay, just to get a little bit. I usually let this dry a little bit so it won't be so muddy. And then we're going to pick up a little bit of... Uh, I'm using my scruffy now, guys. My little small one in the complete set. And picking up just a little bit of black and white. Pounce it on my plate just to get her working. Too much black. Take some out. Okay, so... But the first thing I want to do is just start adding some black in my uh, around all my center, okay? And I'm just tipping my brush back a little bit so that it's only getting the black part that's done. Okay, then I'm going to go pick up a little bit of fresh white, and I'm going to just speckle that. And you have to go and pick up a little bit of fresh white every once in a while. Work your way around and don't touch the same area twice too many times because then it'll start making it muddy. Okay, and just work your way out of it so that it you can work your way around. Okay, so I'm a little bit heavy there. You can always go back in with a little tiny bit of black and darken any areas. Alrighty. So then when I'm done my center, then I'm going to go in and do a quick little extra little details. And what I like to do is uh, pick up a little bit of citrus and white. And when I have anything smaller than a eight guys, like a size six like this, I like to do my loading a little bit different. This is how we did it on in the nail industry. We always did side to side. You can control your brush a lot easier. And I have a whole program on tiny painting guys, okay? So if you really want to hone in on those tiny little brushes, then you'll have to check out my tiny... Uh, it's a little uh, fast-track version of the complete program. And I teach you the bugs and butterflies to do really tiny too. And uh, rosebuds and everything is all in that program. And you don't have to worry about down downloading anything. It's all on my site, guys. Okay, you can watch all the videos right there. Okay. So once I have the center in there, then I can start doing a tiny little chisel, one stroke, almost like little tiny daisies. And I like to do my little stir. And I counted them on a real one, and there's actually seven of them, guys. So you do two like hands, and then you split the one in the bottom in four. <laughs> so you got seven. All right, so if you have more or less, it doesn't matter. And especially when you're painting them this tiny on a nail, you'll never see them. So you don't even have to worry about that uh, detail. But that's my quick little poppy that I wanted to share with you guys today. And like I said, I will have a complete program with the practice sheets and the breakdown and, you know, more information for you guys. The glare is hard to see. Yeah, it's so shiny. I'm, gonna, I'm playing with my settings, especially when you got wet paint. All right, how's that? Is that a little bit better? I just turned it down. Stop moving it. Red is a very challenging color to show you guys, guys. And you'll see, like, the picture that I showed you already, okay? It shows a lot better detail. Of, it's just too shiny under the lights. Okay. Shut them right off and then you won't be able to see anything at all. <laughs> okay. You guys got the gist of it all for a quickie little uh, freebie tip that I'm going to share with you guys. And then, like I said, I will have uh, it all pre-recorded. And uh, when I'm pre-recording, I make sure that everything, all the bugs are worked out in the video and, and uh, that you guys can see and uh, hear me good. 
and uh that's why i like pre-recording all my courses guys it's just is i have more control of what you guys are seeing when you're doing live and streaming it's so hard because i don't see what you guys are seeing until 30 seconds later and it's too late so uh, when i do my pre-recording it's all done in the studio and uh, it's not a live class that i i've kept they're all pre-recorded uh, some of my projects are from but some of them aren't so i have a bunch of projects that are pre-recorded as well and uh, so i can control the camera settings better but we're getting better guys we're getting better okay i've come a long way if you've known me over a year uh definitely i have uh, learned a lot on uh, doing these uh, videos and now i'm pushing myself to learn live so i uh, thank you thank you thank you for being in here and hanging out with me if you have specific questions and you just want to cover a couple things with me private i do have an option for you to go on my site and book some zoom time with me private one-on-one -on -one, and i'll send you that recording as well so you'll be able to remember all the questions that you asked and things i showed you you'll be able to keep that recording as well but i hope you're going to jump on all my projects that i have pre-recorded and join us for my holiday chicken okay so you have a happy wonderful painting day